Ladies and gentlemen, friends, loved ones, family members, we are gathered here today to welcome the union of this one mass murdering terrorist and another. I am talking about the X-Men wedding special number one, Mystique and Destiny. And uh, this has been a long time coming, as uh, longtime fans may know. Uh, matter of fact, uh, they have not only had to uh, avoid the adversity that most couples have to deal with, but also with uh, the Comics Code Authority and Jim Shooter that did not allow this to be a thing. Uh, so much so that Destiny uh, eventually died. I don't know how connected that was to her death, but she died in 89 and stayed dead for quite a while uh, until they were able to bring her back. Um, and their marriage and their relationship as they've been kind of kind of delving into the backstory of it uh, up until her resurrection has been kind of really uh, beautiful for two super villains. And uh, yeah, it's you can kind of compare it to the DC uh, uh, lesbian couple of Harley and Ivy, but uh, this definitely does have a vibe in and of its own. And um, this is brought to you by uh, a, a, oof, a crew of writers. Uh, let's see. Uh, the writers are Karen Gillan, uh, Teeny Howard, uh, Tate Brombro, uh, Yoon Ha Lee, and Wyatt Kennedy. It's drawn by Rachel Scott, uh, Philip uh, Seavey, uh, Emilio Pilu, uh, Stephen Byrne, and uh, Jen Seonj. And forgive me if I mispronounce any of those names. Uh, but uh, we kind of like get through uh, like the, the basics. By the way, uh, Rogue looks pretty hot in this like suit. I'm really liking it. Uh, and of course, the one uh, conducting the ceremony will be Nightcrawler. And it's this really interesting um, kind of like coming together of the family in a way. Like these are two kids they abandoned years ago. And there was a lot of hardship. And they've been able to kind of come together. Uh, and of course, you know, Mystique and Destiny are, you know, you know discussing that. When they get a a, uh, when they get a gift, a mysterious gift from Nathaniel, and I think that's Mr. Sinister, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyway, we cut to, uh, they break this up, and what's uh, nice is it's kind of like broken up <laughs> with invitations. I think that's a nice visual uh, guide. Uh, Betsy uh, Baddock, uh, Captain Britain, uh, we get to see her and Rachel Summers in an adventure, uh, although I will be honest, it's nicely written and nicely drawn, but it really kind of doesn't feel as well connected to uh, the other parts of this story. It is nicely done, though, and uh, the relationship's cute. I actually don't mess too much with this side of Marvel, the Captain Britain, the British uh, heroes as much. So uh, this is interesting. And then, of course, we get to Wolverine and uh, him and his students uh, kind of harken back to the time when he was kind of, you know, in charge of, like, the school, and those students are back with him, and... They're trying to, they're leaping from place to place, uh, trying to figure out the perfect gift until he just goes, ah, screw it, here's a gun. It, you're, you're a psychopath like me, here's a gun. Uh, he gives it to uh, Mystique. Uh, then of course we get to Emma Frost where she like does this kind of couples counseling uh, with them and none other than Loki appears. Uh, I gotta say this, uh, a nice little appearance. By the way, Loki, Appearing with like Emma Frost and like Mystique, I don't know that 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 grouping seems natural. Uh, then of course we get to Rogue, and I really dig uh, the art on this one. Uh, let's see who did the art on this one. It was let's see. It is. I have to apologize. I believe it's Stephen Byrne. I really do like the style. It stands out. It's a little bit more cartoonier uh, than some of the more realistic X Men. Uh, artists, but I really like it. I like the strong lines of this, uh, and it's a cute uh, story. Uh, I always enjoy Rogue and Gambit, and uh, it's really nicely done. And then, of course, to the big conclusion, uh, where, uh, let's see, Mystique isn't talking very much. Uh, she's being uncharacteristically, I don't know, she's not exactly a talky person, but she's not really doing much. And uh, Destiny shows up in this amazing uh, outfit, which, which has the skull bouquet. Very, very, very cool. Uh, it's broken up because somebody has broken into uh, the lair of Scarlet Witch. And 
that's of course pretty important. So all all the Marvel heroes like run. And apparently it was Mystique, and the gift they got from Nathaniel was a uh, one of those like uh, uh, life model decoys uh, to kind of fool everyone into thinking that she's at the wedding and not stealing from from uh, from the Scarlet Witch. It's pretty funny, and it's a wonderful kind of like big celebratory uh, ending as they run off uh, into the sunset, which I'll be honest, like all the shit they've had to deal with over the years, they pretty much deserve. And this kind of comes nice and packed. It has a, for those of you who aren't like thoroughly, and I'm not, I don't know everything about this couple. So this was kind of nice to give you the history of the couple, uh, an interview with Chris Claremont, uh, which is our, our very nice, uh, of course, previews on what's coming up. And then two backup stories, uh, a uh, Iceman story uh, written by, uh, written and drawn by uh, Luciano Oveto, and an X-Men, uh, not an X-Men, an X-Factor short story uh, written by Peter David and uh, it's Guan Yap, and it's from X-Factor Annual 6. And it's a great, when, when, uh, when Destiny was dead, like dead, dead, uh, we get to see this wonderful short story written by Peter David of her kind of like accepting it and moving on. And it ends with this wonderful joke, a joke that's kind of spoiled in the body of this book because it's it uh, references that uh, in uh, the Emma Frost story, and I guess if this is added for context, um, it almost feels like, oh, man, maybe they should have put this stuff up front or maybe not be as blatant as referencing it, but uh, you know, maybe not include like a panel of it, or you know, maybe just mention like, oh, you know, this kind of thing happened. Uh, but you know what? With the context of going back and rereading it and uh, going through the motions of it, I think it still stands even with the joke spoiled. Uh, but I really love this. Uh, this was pretty good. Uh, I don't think it's perfect. I think the Captain Britain uh, short story, while nice, is, uh, I don't know, kind of like slows the th thing down for a bit. Uh, maybe another character could have been added. Uh, <laughs> something that amused me was when I saw this cover, like Captain Marvel was on the cover, and I was like, man, that's pretty mature of her to show up to the wedding of someone who murdered one of her old boyfriends a uh, long time ago. Uh, Mystique killed her, uh, one of her boyfriends in the form of Carol uh, that she watched on video. And here she is at the wedding. Uh, I mean, I couldn't do that. But uh, she is not in the book. She's only on the cover. So uh, a more realistic, <laughs> I think, take where it's like, you know what? Hey, good for them, but uh, fuck her. I'm not going to the wedding. Uh, good for her. I would not. Uh, so, hey, I uh, really dug this. Like I said, the Captain Britain, I think, kind of slows it down and kind of drags it down to uh, four out of five ramp chips for me. But otherwise, uh, I think worth uh, the uh, the price, just barely. Maybe a dollar or two more, but eh, whatever. If it's a slow week, if you have the money, uh, I would pick it up, especially if you're a uh, Mystique and Destiny fan or getting more interested in these uh, characters. Uh, I would check it out. So, hey, that's what I thought of uh, X-Men The Wedding Special number one. And what did you think? What do you think of uh, Mystique and Destiny? Let, them, let me know in the comments below. That always helps me with my, what do you call it, algorithms? I don't know. I don't know this shit. Uh, it could help me with those. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, and uh, follow me on The Real Manos. You can follow me, oh, geez, on ooh, uh, like Facebook and Instagram and Tumblr and Twitter and threads, and I'm still on Blue Sky, uh, and you can support this channel for just a dollar a month, and it also supports Manos Publishing, uh, starting at a dollar a month at Patreon. So uh, follow the links below, and I am building a Substack too. Uh, I haven't started listing the, um, the links there for it, but uh, yeah, I'll get to it. Anyway, I think that's it for now. I'm gonna head out. Push the button, Lindsay.